What's up everyone? Welcome back to Hustle is for Life Motivation. I am here to serve you as always and you are here because like me, you believe that holistic success is not only possible, but it is something that is your goal. We all come here to learn from amazing guests so we can follow in their footsteps and essentially reach the same level of success that they have managed to reach and also create the same extraordinary results that they have created for themselves. Today, I'm joined by somebody really, really special. Uh, his name is G. Brian Benson. He is absolutely phenomenal. He's the founder of Reawaken Media. He is an award-winning and number one best-selling author, filmmaker, actor, a TEDx speaker, and he is also a four times Ironman triathlete. So with that, please help me welcome Brian to the show. Brian, thanks for being here. Thank you, Talal. My pleasure. It's a, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> and you. So, Brian, you have done so much. And, and just before we started recording, we were talking about the other products that you're working on right now. And uh, you actually started in your family's business. So I know there's a fantastic story you know, behind all of this. So let's start there. Let's start with that amazing story of how you were in your family business and then you left that to venture out into the unknown and created such extraordinary results for yourself. Sure, thank you. Uh, basically, I, I'm from Oregon and uh, my family, we had a, uh, a golf center. It was a driving range and a retail store and a nine hole par three course. And I kind of grew up working there and I ended up running it for 11 years after I uh, wow. got out of college. And after a while, it just, I just kind of felt like I was done growing there. And uh, I felt like I was supposed to do something else with my life. I had no idea what it was at the time. But I had a conversation with my dad and said, you know, I, I, I want to leave. And, and th I mean, I would have done it either way, but thank thankfully he was accepting of that. And he just, you know, he wanted me to be happy. And so that was great. But it ended up taking me a year from that conversation to actually leave because we decided to sell it. And so, uh, you know, I had to go through the whole process of listing it and interviewing yeah. potential buyers, et cetera. And so during that year, I was just ready to hit the road and just start my new life, whatever that meant. And I was, I found myself becoming kind of out of balance. And so one day I just sat down and, and wrote down five things that I felt would help me stay in balance during this period. Right. And, and they really did, you know, and after a, maybe a month or two, my intuition was saying, expand the list and write a book. And I would never written a book before. So I sat down and at the tail end of being at the job, I just kind of had this simple book on how to stay in balance pour through me. And I did that and I ended up self-publishing it um, in 2009. And uh, I didn't even think Amazon had create space then. If they did, I didn't know about it. I just found an editor and a layout person and ordered 2,000 copies, <laughs> <laughs> which, nice. which later I found out was probably too many. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, 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 it ended up uh, winning a couple of awards, which really surprised me. And, wow. But yet, that is kind of what pointed me on this whole journey that I've been on since. Um, you know, I, I was terrified to speak in front of people. And, uh, and well, let me f rephrase this first. Right after I left the business, I ended up moving to Reno, Nevada um, to be near my son, who was just entering high school then. And so, um, in addition to, you know, reconnecting and being there for him, I also kind of started to reinvent myself, but, uh, I was terrified to speak in front of people and I knew that I would need to, if I wanted to share the book, I'd need to get better at that. And so I forced myself to take, um, community college speech classes and I signed up for Toastmasters for a while. Nice. I, uh, thanks. I did a whole bunch of things to step out of my comfort zone. I, I created a workshop for the book um, that I could give to people. I made it interactive so I didn't have to talk the whole time, but I found out that it worked really well that way. <laughs> nice. I, uh, I hired someone to be a co-host with me on an internet radio show who had been doing it for a while because I was terrified. <laughs> um, and, I, and I signed up for an acting class because I thought that would be another thing that might help me um, just get more comfortable. I had no, no plans on acting. So thereafter, the acting class 
finished, I, um, I had a dream about this idea, which I woke up and wrote down. Um, and I met a young filmmaker just randomly. And I said, hey, I have this idea that might be kind of a fun short film. I, I don't know how to make one, but would you do it with me? And he said, sure. So a couple of weeks, weeks later, we found ourselves on the streets of Reno, Nevada, making Guitar Man. And it was really an empowering experience for me because number one, I'd never acted before. Number two, I'd never played guitar in front of anybody. I was always a closet guitarist, and yet I did both of those in the film. And it ended up doing kind of well at film festivals. And so, um, I mean, feel free to pop in if you have any questions. I mean, there's just one thing leads to another, leads to another, you know what I mean? Sure. But uh, somebody saw that short film and invited me to be in their short film. And the female lead was um, a really talented actress who's been in Hollywood forever, and she's in her 80s now. Um, but her mom, parents were actors. Her mom was in Citizen Kane way back in the 30s. But uh, so I met Jill, and it was a really sweet short film. And uh, we stayed in touch. She lived in LA. I still lived in Nevada. And one day we were chatting, and I just felt like my intuition was kind of telling me to come move here and she said out of the blue was moving out apparently she had a studio attached to her house so I moved there for the first two and a half years and it was nice because you know I knew someone and it kind of made it a little easier to navigate all the newness of a big city and um, exposing myself to a, a really beautiful yet difficult yet um, <laughs> uh, industry you know of acting there's another word i'm trying to think of it's not coming to me right now but but it's it's acting's been really great for me because i started studying as soon as i got here and it's been such an important part of my self-growth process you know i've learned to just be able to feel more and just um, not only obviously become more comfortable in front of people but just it's really really helped me um gain gain some more uh, you know uh, self-worth and 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 come to grips with with some areas that maybe i wasn't complete so it's just been really magical uh you know it hasn't always been easy obviously um and then during that whole process i also uh, wrote another book and then i also put together a couple kids books and so it's just really been a matter of uh, kind of like i said in my tedx talk i just happily expect the unexpected you know, I have an idea of I, I want to do what I want do kind of on a bigger scale. And, and I'm not really here to tell anybody what to do, but I kind of feel like I'm supposed to be just an example for others to just try to live as authentically as they can and to to share, you know, and, and be themselves. And, and if they have any creativity inside of them to share it. I mean, I did not know any of this was inside of me until it kind of started unexpectedly appearing. So um, I'm just letting things continue to evolve. Brilliant. That's, that's awesome. Great story, Brian. And um, thank you for sharing that. Um, do you okay. think it's more important to have a plan in place before you go ahead and start following your you know, intuition and start taking action? Or do you feel that we have to wait for the right moment where you have clarity, where you have the inspiration, and then go ahead and take action? Okay. I think it's a combination of both. Both. Um, I think you need to really, when making a decision, run it through your, your heart filter, you know what I mean? And really try to get honest with what you, the information you're being told. I mean, uh, maybe uh, sometimes we might, we use this too much, you know what I mean? It, and, and, and our decisions are based on out of fear fear maybe or that or what they think we should do and so you know it's hard not to completely get all of that out but for me I just early on it was just all systems go I'm doing what I feel like I'm supposed to do and I didn't let any other I didn't let my, my head get in the way now my head's gotten in the way along the along the route um, as, as certain things have happened and as I feel like maybe certain things are, are supposed to happen and my expectations get built up and, and instead of just really trying to stay grounded with it, you know, I, I let some disappointment come in when something doesn't happen the way I hoped it would. 
which can ultimately, I feel like it will, but it, it um, I think for me, expectations in some ways have kind of helped nullify some of the joy of this, the journey that I've been on. I mean, I've been, it's been great, but yet it's also been painful in a lot of ways too, because I haven't, uh, I'm a very driven person and I haven't sometimes celebrated my wins like I should have and patted myself on the back and taken a brief moment of um, just reflection on the really cool thing that maybe I, I was able to produce or accomplish. It was always kind of like, what's next, you yeah. know, to get me to that proverbial finish line, which there is no finish line. It, it really is about just enjoying the moments that you're in, whether it's creating, whether it's connecting with somebody, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, walking. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I beat myself up along the way. It hasn't all, it hasn't all been rosy. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And you know what? I, I can relate to that very strongly. I'm, I'm, I'm very much like that. I'm sure people in the audience as well, they can relate to that where you have accomplished something. And once you've accomplished that, you, you don't take the time to celebrate it. You don't take the time to really, you know, kind of internalize what you managed to do, what you managed to create and what yeah. you managed to achieve. And you then move on to the next thing. And I'm definitely like that. I do one thing and it's like, okay, fine. Tell vision. What's next? Let's go crush that. Yes, why do you yes. think that is, Brian, why do you think we do that to ourselves? Well, I think there's a variety of reasons. One, um, you know, a lot of it has to do with self-worthiness. And uh, I know I've had to work on that a lot. And, and a lot of people would think with all that I've done, he's got that licked. But, you know, there's parts of me that I'm still trying to really fully love and accept myself. Mm. And so I think for some people, the accomplishment temporarily feeds their self-esteem and that's where they get their sense of being from but it's short-lived you know as you know because it's got to come from within and uh it's something that you know i've understood intellectually forever but yet until you really sometimes it's just not i don't know you know it, just, it takes things to happen or we're just not ready for it to really sink in but i'm, I'm getting to the place where i'm really you know, getting more comfortable with myself and not feeling the need to, to, to grind like I do. I mean, I, I have goals. I mean, when I was three, I told my mom that I was put here to inspire people, you know, so I feel like I'm, I want to share on a big scale. And, you know, I don't feel like it's ego driven. I hope not. I mean, we all have some ego and probably we need to have a little bit to kind of keep us moving along but um that that knowledge that i told her that and that you know holding on to that's kind of probably been a blessing and a burden because i since i feel like i know where i'm supposed to go that's kind of driven me maybe sometimes in ways that have not been beneficial to me right right yeah so brian when when you talk about the fact that you um want to share the message and you want to make an impact how important is that for you and and why 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 do you feel that that is something that you have to do hmm. i think some of that still remains to be seen i mean part of it i think was just what we just talked about the whole self-worthiness thing i mean there's part of me that felt like i needed to do that to to allow myself to feel worthy but it's interesting. I've been changing quite a bit lately. Um, I don't know if it's maturity or astrologically, whatever. <laughs> but it's just like I'm. I'm not. I was about to say I'm not caring as much. Caring is not the right word. It's just I'm letting go and surrendering even more to the process and trying to just find joy in creating, and and. Um, and letting whatever I create be whatever it is supposed to be. Um, yeah, I'll give you a point, an example. Uh, about a year and a half ago when I released my first children's book, 
you know, I was really proud of it. I felt like it turned out great and it actually reached number one on an Amazon in its category for a couple of days. Wow. Which was awesome. But yet I was depressed for the whole week after that. I think I just, I put, I don't know what I expected. Um, it's just that I, it was kind of the straw that broke my camel's back though, because I felt like if I'm not going to have fun doing this and I'm going to put all this pressure on myself, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And so it, um, that really was a big game changer for me and it's helped me just chill out and just try to come into my, my, my being and my authenticity, um, even more, you know what I mean? And just, and just share and be open and just let things land where they're supposed to land. Awesome. So Brian, you've, you've mentioned it a few times about living authentically. How, how do you define that? What's your definition of living authentically? I think it all starts with just total self-acceptance, you know, and, and um, honoring what you have to work with. And, and um, boy, you know, the, the love for ourselves is the foundation for everything. I mean, if we can love ourselves, everything else just seems to kind of fall into place. You know, we don't um, carry some of the fear that we might, you know, hold on to when we're not sure of who we are or we're trying to be somebody else or we don't, um, we're not carrying all that extra energy of, of just like, you know, worry and, and, you know, should I say this or what are people going to think if I say this or, you know what I mean? It's just, there's a, a huge level of freedom that comes when we can just totally accept ourselves. And I think that's where authenticity starts. And then it's just a matter of just honoring your feelings and being truthful about them. Mm. You know? Yeah. Love it. I absolutely love it. That's uh, that's, that's great. And I struggle with that. I struggle with that and I'm, I'm sure people in the audience can relate as well. And, and, and I'm sure some of them struggle with this as well. Yeah. What did the process look for you, like for you where you learned to love yourself and you learned to, you know, work on yourself and follow your intuition? What did the process look like for you? Uh, what did it look like? I don't know if I can explain what it looked like for me, but I mean, it's definitely a process and I think, it just it's it can be slow at times and sometimes we can have epiphanies you know and kind of pop through something but i mean <laughs> it's it's a process for sure and do you, do you have any practices the, sorry i i was wondering if you have any practices uh, that that allow you to go yeah. through that yeah 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 let me say this one thing first before mm -hmm. i share some of those sure all the projects that i've done whether it's the books or some of the short films you name it they've all been extensions of my self growth process mm -hmm. um for example, a short film that came out a few years ago called Searching for Happiness. And at the time, I didn't really realize it. But if you look at it now, it's just like it was my own search for happiness. You know, as I um, I won't spoil the film. It's, it's on YouTube and my website. But it's, it's, it's done in a creative way. And this person is searching for happiness. They're reading a book called Searching for Happiness as well. And they're just kind of observing and watching life. And um some, some interesting things happen in a unique way that kind of enables the, the character to, to understand where true happiness comes from. But, but so that was just an extension of me. But as far as practices go, exercise has always been a big part of my life that helps me, you know, just to feel better about myself. Um, fairly healthy eating makes a big difference. Um, you know, I like to meditate. Um, I like to walk that that's huge um what else i probably don't read as much as i should but uh <laughs> but but after the chat we had earlier that you inspired me to start doing that more so thank you but uh yeah you know just just trying to surround myself with I'm, I'm blessed i have a lot of really kind positive um acquaintances in my life and friends and so that that plays a big part as well beautiful you know? yeah surrounding yeah. yourself with other people that are vibrating at a higher level and and just inspire you to you know continue the process absolutely absolutely and 
with the reading thing, to be honest, I actually am part of an online <laughs> book club to hold me wow. accountable. Yeah, to hold me accountable, essentially, wow. because if, if I'm not, then I, I just let things slide. You know, you just get busy with other stuff and you let things slide. But my goal is to read a book a month. Um, and, you know, that, that's because I'm part of the book club. So, you know, I, I, I'm forced to make sure that I, I'm, I'm going to be held accountable. So I have to read those books. So that might be a good strategy for, for people who are, you know, wondering how they can start to read more. It's just join a book club or put, put one together, you know, get some friends together and see, you know, if you can start. A book yeah. Club together. yeah. You know, for some reason, it's always been hard for me to read during the day. I always feel like I should be doing something, I don't know, more physical or I don't know. And I just need to, I need to let that go because reading is a form of meditation as well. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And yeah. I think with nowadays, it's not just, you know, you don't have to have physical books. You can get audio books, you can get podcasts, you can listen to, you know, uh, lectures online, all yeah. sorts of stuff, right? So it's all available to yeah. you. So it's not, it's, it's really, I think, you know, for anybody really, it, you don't really have an excuse for, I, I don't read, books anymore so you know i have audio books i i listen to a lot of podcasts my my you know journey to and back from work is something where i'm always listening to an audio book or a podcast um but apart right. from that I, I also read a book a month um and and sometimes i read more than once you know <laughs> because some months you you're you have more time compared to you know other uh months or, or some weeks are better so you just sit down and just like crush two books in in a month sometimes uh, <laughs> But that's, yeah. that's just something that I, I'm using and it's kind of working for me. Um, so I thought I'll share that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah no problem. Um, so Brian, let's take it in a different action. Do you believe in holistic success? Sure. Do me a favor and explain maybe a definition of holistic success because ah. I'm definitely a fan of holistic methods. Mm. Um, so basically what this is that for most people, they have goals in terms of their career, their jobs, their businesses, what car they want, what holiday they want to go on, what house they want to live in, how much money they want in the bank account, uh, you know, what investments they want to have, what assets they want to own, what kind of relationship they want. But mainly what they do is they focus on one area or, you know, just few areas, but they are not looking at everything else. So they might be ignoring their health, they might be ignoring their spirituality, they might be ignoring their finances, their relationships, while they are just you know, going after that one thing. Now, I believe mm -hmm. that it's possible to have holistic success, by which I mean you can be successful in all areas of your life. Now, not, you, you won't be able to maintain the same level of, uh, say, success, in every area all the time, but it's something that you can work on all the areas and accelerate and improve on all those things. So it's not just that your marriage, your personal relationships have been the same for literally years and decades. You have not made any progress. You have not had any, you know, more insightful conversations. Um, or for example, in terms of your, you know, personal development, you haven't read any more books or, you know, go and connect with any different people. So I believe that holistic success requires you to go ahead and take a lot of action in all those different areas of your life. So you can accelerate all areas of your life. I totally agree with you. You know, I think anybody that becomes successful in just one thing and, and negates it, Number one, I don't think they're going to be that happy or it could be short lived, um, you know, and, and I don't think you just need, you need to have a, a strong foundation to to um, allow success to be sustainable. Hmm. And if you're just focusing on one thing, I don't think it can be. Yeah, I mean, if you know, all the other areas are successful or we're, we're spending some some attention on them and we have great relationships with family and friends or maybe even a loved one you know, that in and of itself is, um, can be very inspiring. And it's just, you know, um, just solidifying. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I actually love the word that you use there, sustainable. Right, I love yeah. that word. So l l let's let's go further then. Let's define holistic success sure. as success that you, where you are accelerating all areas, areas of your life, but you're able to sustain it over a long period of time, and not just a matter of you know you have a, a great relationship. Uh, at home with your family for say a week and then obviously that that gets pushed to the back of the pile while you actually go and you know tackle something else right you know something just popped into my head it may not be true but it, uh, it feels like if somebody is just focusing on one thing that can be maybe ego driving it and that in and of itself is not gonna allow it probably to be sustainably successful either yeah. Yeah, yeah, and but, but I, I I do believe that in the very short term, sometimes yes. it is very you know it, it, it's it's required of you to just focus on one thing because either there's uh, a problem there that needs to be solved or the fact is that you will not you know uh, accelerate that area of your life without that kind of very focused input. So in the short term, yes, there might be a time where you need to put in a lot of effort uh, and a lot of energy into just one area but overall when you look at the the bigger picture you really need to be looking at holistic success and not just in like i need to be a millionaire in the next you know 10 years or so i totally agree and you know as we talked off the air prior um i told you right now i'm just basically focusing on done by the end of june and in some ways, I felt like it has been a kind of a joy to rest my brain and all the other things and balls that I've been juggling to just focus on that. But it won't be forever. But it's just, you know, so yes, I, yeah. I agree with that. Awesome. Awesome. Because I, I think that if you want to accelerate any area of your life, you're going to have to put disproportionate amount of time, effort, resources, money, etc. into that one area to actually move it to the next level. And then you can go and go back to focusing on other areas, but definitely for that one area to go further, you have to allocate disproportionate kind of resources and effort and time into that for the short term. And then you can go back uh, and look at the other areas and, and make sure that you're, you know, accelerating them as well. Yeah. And I'll, while you're saying that, I'm just saying, I'm looking back at the last eight or nine years that I've been on my journey, I've tried so many different things and, and then, you know, been landed well but just a lot of different stuff i haven't really honed it mm. and really so i think i mean, i'm not going to beat myself up for it because all the different things that i've done have opened doors in different ways which have been great and, and sometimes maybe a certain door opened because of all the different things that i'm doing rather yeah. than just, i'm at the point now where i i need to take it one step further and hone even more yeah yeah absolutely yeah. perfect awesome so brian well said. <laughs> thank you brian i know that you're working on your book right now your latest book uh at the moment can you tell us a little bit about what the book is about sure um right now we don't have a title but it, in a nutshell it's, it's going to be a whole bunch of different um things that I've done in the last eight or nine years that have helped me build my foundation. And I'm going to, you know, little inspired ideas in, 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 in a, a whole bunch of different areas that have helped me. And so I'm going to talk about them, you know, how I learned through them as well as maybe share some personal stories. So it, I'm wanting it to be kind of a, a fun, inspiring book that also gets people thinking and helps hopefully give gives them some great ideas to to help strengthen their foundation too fantastic awesome and brian where can people go to find out more about you and to connect with you and uh, how can they help, actually help you right now thank you well my my website is the letter it's g and um got a lot of stuff on there my short films and tedx talk and you name it i tried to make it a fun site and um you know as far as how can you help me i I'd, I'd love to just to keep in touch and, and maintain a friendship and just kind of continue the dialogue perfect awesome 
Awesome. Well, there you have it, guys. Our amazing conversation with G. Brian Benson. He is absolutely amazing. He had some really amazing insights. And I definitely have some really big takeaways from, from this conversation, including the fact that you have to just take action and not wait for inspiration and total clarity to fall in your lap. And the fact that we have to follow our intuition and that is the only way we will actually find clarity. Um, also, Brian talked a lot about, you know, living authentically and what that actually means and how you can actually achieve it. He talked about his daily practices with meditation, just taking a walk and finding the joy in small things. Because guess what? If you try and chase after the horizon, you'll never be able to catch it because it just moves farther and farther away the closer you try and run to it. And the fact that we are all here for holistic, sustainable success. We shouldn't just be focused on one area of our life that I have to become a billionaire or I have to actually, you know, uh, have that job or have that career or have that car or have that house. It's about creating a life and life requires you to focus on all areas including your spirituality and relationships and your personal life and your time and your energy and your physical health and your mental health and all those things are important and we need to be focused on that. So this was an awesome conversation. Brian, it was a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Awesome. Guys, as always, I really appreciate you spending this time with me. If you like any of this stuff, if any of this resonated with you, if there were any big takeaways, first of all, make sure you like and comment below to tell us what those big takeaways were. Uh, also share these conversations with other people because at the end of the day, we want to spread this message. And if you believe in this message, if you believe that this has helped you, then go ahead and share it with somebody else who might need to hear this as well. And somebody who might be close to you. And as always, I will ask you guys to subscribe to the channel simply because then you can be sure that you don't miss any of the future amazing conversations with more awesome guests that are still yet to be had. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you spending this time with me as always. Hustle hard and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.